All right, guys, so today I want to talk to you guys about how regulators work. So this is going to be kind of the same for a tank regulator, the regulator that is in your paintball gun. Um, so anyway, let's just jump right into it. So this is found on ZDSPB.com. There's a ton of animations there that kind of help break these things down. I'm going to kind of go over some of these uh, over time. We'll go over regs specifically here. So first off, you have your input pressure or the inlet here. So this is either going to be, in this scenario, it's from your tank going into the regulator. Um, so we'll break that down first and I'll explain the difference with the, uh, how a tank regulator works versus this setup. So because they are essentially the same. So, so essentially you have your high pressure. So this is going to be approximately 450 to 850 PSI going into the regulator. Um, and what's going to happen is here we have what's called our piston. Um, and basically this is going to move each time that you fire your gun and whatnot. And I'll explain here how this works. So, so your piston, if there was no air in here, uh, which I don't really have a way to stop this, but if there's no air, what's going to happen is this, this, the, these red coils here are actually a spring. The spring's pushing up against this piston, so it'll be in that upper position. And that's going to be, like that would allow air to come right into this piston. Um, but if you had no air in the gun, you'd have zero PSI here, zero here, and this piston would actually be up. So as you apply air through the inlet here, what's going to happen is air is going to actually come through this little gap here that comes when the piston is up and it's gonna start going, as you can see, up into the top part of this piston. The pressure is gonna go into your gun. You can see here um, that the pressure is gonna build up. And as the pressure builds up, what happens is that actually this pressure here is gonna start pushing down against the piston and against the spring. And it's gonna push down as the pressure builds up. Once the piston actually hits the regulator seat, which is this bottom piece here, it's actually like usually a, not a plastic, but there's gonna be a seat that the, the face of the, uh, piston is going to hit against and seal against, it's going to stop building pressure. So you can see the pressure stops here. So essentially, uh, once you fire your paintball gun or relieve the pressure from the top of this, uh, the piston is going to be able to come up because the spring's pushing it, pushing it up, um, which is going to allow more pressure, the high input pressure to go into here to, again, build up this pressure to push down. And essentially, it's just like an on-off. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how it works. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, so a couple things here is one if we were to take this regulator seat and we were to move this farther down as if uh, imagine if you put an allen wrench in the bottom of this here and you were to turn that so that this moved it down that's what you're doing when you adjust your velocity on most paintball guns as you're moving this reg seat further away or closer to the piston so if we were to move it further away it would take more pressure to push this down and shut the air supply off so, and if we were to move it closer, it would reduce the pressure, which is usually going to either reduce or increase the velocity of your paintball gun. So that's kind of how exactly, well, it's not kind of, it's exactly how a uh, tank regulator works. Uh, excuse me, a regulator on your gun works. The tank regulator is the same thing, and I'll explain that, the differences here a little bit. There's not a different animation I know I can show you with, but uh, let's see, a couple things here. So if you were to um, have a leak, I don't know if we really need to talk about leaks, but I will tell you too is that some of you guys have regulators and a lot of have regulators and they might have a, a leak somewhere. If it does have a leak, there's usually a hole that you can see here in the, the kind of side of the regulator somewhere. And what that's for is because if you uh, did not have that hole, you can kind of create a pressure lock here between these two O-rings. So as you can see, as, as pressure comes into the regulator here, uh, this O-ring prevents the input pressure from venting out of the bottom of your regulator. The O-ring on the lower part of the piston forces this air to go through the center of the piston up to the top to build up. And then essentially, this little circle here is an O-ring on the top of the piston. If you didn't have this O-ring on, air is going to escape past this and past the other side also and allow this to go out this vent here. And same thing, if you had a bad O-ring on the bottom of your piston, it'll allow air to escape or to leak through the, the little gap that would be there to then vent out of the uh, like vent on the regulator. But if you didn't have this vent, then you'd have kind of a pressure lock, I think. I don't actually know for sure, but you know if you have more pressure in there, it's not going to work as well. So um, Other things, if it's leaking out of the bottom where the adjustment velocity screw is, then typically there's going to be an O-ring on those that are going to seal that up. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's how a tank reg works. Pretty simple. Excuse me, regulator on your gun. So a tank regulator is very similar to this. The difference is, is that on a tank regulator, let's imagine that this uh, inlet pressure doesn't exist here, which is to eliminate this. So this, this yellow color 
just go and Photoshop, bam, straight down here so it looks exactly like this side. So what would happen in a tank regulator is you don't have this same uh, seat scenario. Uh, what happens is there's actually, essentially this inlet is coming through the bottom here and it's just going to come straight out. The seat typically on a tank regulator is actually going to be in the bottom of the piston here. So like literally if you move this seat into the bottom of this little section here. Um, so you had kind of invert this piece to the bottom. So what happened is the piston still moves. You'd also have a set of holes that would be just above where that seat is. Um, and I may eventually I'll redo this video and show you guys a little more clearly. But what would happen is the pressure would come through the bottom of the regulator. It's going to still get past the same gap that exists here or would exist when it's not down and sealed. It's going to go through the holes that would be just above the seat to go to the top to build up pressure. And as this pushes down, the seat on the piston is going to push down against the kind of uh, opening that would be here, this, this opening like this that would be in the bottom. So um, anyway, it's kind of long and redundant, but that's how regulators work. If you ever get it, so there's a couple other things you could do. Uh, there's a couple tools that are really valuable for this. Is uh, So you can see here that you know this pressure builds up and they can monitor it here. Well, there's one thing that happens with, with regs in general is if you have a bad seat or damage to your piston or basically either of these sealing surfaces here is uh, basically the pressure can continue to climb or what we call creep. Um, so then you're going need to need to replace either the piston or the reg seat. So they do make, like we have little adapters that would go onto the regulator or onto the tank. It has what we call a, a slide check. So it allows you to vent the air and you put a gauge on there. Uh, I don't remember what we saw them for, but I'll post a link somewhere so you guys could purchase this tool if you want. But it allows you to put this tool onto your tank reg or to your the regulator of your gun, depending on the gun that you have. Um, pressurize it, see the pressure, and you can essentially vent that to see the flow of your regulator. So the slide check, you literally, I mean, it looks weird in the camera, but you just pull it back, it vents, or pull it forward, it vents, push it back, it stops. So you can vent air, stop it, and see if the pressure is stopping correctly like it should and also check the pressure level that's coming out of the, uh, the tank or the regulator depending on what you are working on. So anyway, this is the first shot of this video, so um, we'll do more of it in the future, but hopefully that's helpful, teaches you guys a little more. If there's any specific tech questions you have, uh, let me know. I'm happy to do videos on this stuff. It doesn't take too long, and, and I think it's good for the community. So thanks, guys.